Oh. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to yet another edition of Movie Buffed. We're looking like we're in the dark <laughs> living room right now, so but dark uh, in we're here. here to break down the very first episode of our new mini documentary series titled Locals. Locals. We just witnessed the debut episode. Yeah, the Arizona edition, and here we have the creators at the table. I have starting on the far side Dan Najarian. He is the director. Yeah. Of this, <laughs> we have Slime, creative producer, and then we have Andrew. What would we say? Leading camera, camera tech, and head editor. Yeah, I removed. I forgot to put in the credits that you. I mean, you shot like the entire thing. Yeah. So. He, I only had you. I, <laughs> actually, I didn't see it in the credits, so that. I don't think he did that. Yeah, I don't mean, I don't, it, wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah, so it's not official, actually. Yeah. I don't, technically, didn't show I anything. carried all the gear. Yeah, from we, the I Motel helped, 6. I, car- I carried some gear. That's about <laughs> yeah, it. Your yeah. production assistant. How does it feel? <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> I, I was good to be an extra set of hands and watch the whole thing unfold. So there it is. It's out there. So why we have the immediate reaction? I mean, Slime, you were stressing. Dan was locked up in his <laughs> office. He was in the chokey. He was editing till the minute, like yeah. up to the minute. There was a single light bulb just swinging. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, yeah. It was nuts. The Tell, choky, so by let's, the way. Let's start with Dan then. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Andrew to get your opinions on the final stretch, like to the Ooh, minute boy. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I was here all weekend being an idiot, not being efficient with my time and uh, fucking shit up, but it ended up coming out. Andrew came in this morning and helped everything out. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? If you guys hug tighter, you might fuse back into one. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Mango. And, of course, Alex for hanging out and doing the uh, voting show yet again for another awesome Smash Summit event. Yeah. uh, But this morning, I kind of just dumped on Andrew. It's like, hey, I fucked up so much shit over the weekend, and you need to fix it all, please. Like, it's a very, very uncommon situation. (laughs) It doesn't happen a lot. Uh, But, yeah, it was... A lot of little cleaning up and stuff to do this morning. There wasn't any. I like, ruined all the stretch. audio. He's being nice. He, he I literally did. destroyed so, all of the music that we had edited before. He had edited all these sequences what? like nicely with music, and I fucking accidentally basically bumped everything around and deleted half the shit. Yeah, what do you, that you was were mad. Timed. Yeah, I was mad. <laughs> You're just like, well, he said, yeah, this is clearly being is going to be too easy for him. Here, but, all right, uh, yeah, we've been in a hole. I'm so interested in you guys because you guys are both part of the production process. Yeah. Yes, and so you just saw it for here. the first so time. I'm also stressing a bit about what what's going to be coming out. We already put it out there when the episode's going to debut. What people should expect. We farted out the little teasers and then a got trailer. people yeah. excited, and then a trailer mm-hmm. got people really excited. So do you think the expectations were high? Did we match those expectations? Tell me about going right into it. Basically, so uh, the timeline started to become a thing where it was like, um, well, the, for, first of all, we decided to release this this day. And so that yes. just put this hard cap on like, this needs to be done th- by this time. And that's <laughs> typically, I, I suppose, I've been only working here about four months. It's like, that's sort of not the way it goes. That it's is used. not the way it goes. So um, that we, was, yeah, we had a conversation about it because you were like, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Because I do want to hear your reaction, but I think it was interesting. At Early in the project, the pre-production stages, or post-production stages, Slime was very worried about this deadline and very worried about the project as a whole, really, because I don't know. We didn't really know what the fuck we were doing, right? And and he's like, can we push it back? And I'm just like, no. We push back everything. We don't do what yeah, we're you supposed to put down slow. about it. Yeah. Um, and it was like, we're doing this day. Well, what doesn't help is I don't know when we at BTS have ever done this kind of lengthy pre-produced product right never when's the last time we've ever done a piece of content that was like this length a this? narrative short doc I mean, we've no. done funny no. little meme two minute three minute maybe five minute but a 15 minute like mini doc multiple days shooting buttloads of material going your way for the editing so i mean i was there i'd be I'd be pretty nervous too about the deadline for sure. Yeah, and basically I was at this point because I know it's Dan and Andrew at, in post production. Why does we start from like, I don't know. For one, I didn't think that there was much hype. Uh, we I remember we aired the trailer, we aired the teaser, and the reaction seemed kind of tepid. Tepid and, was a great word that you used mm-hmm. when we watched it. I, I saw it was I just saw, like, like hmm, it was just like what tepid the fuck Arizona. is this? Mm-hmm. This isn't yeah. Dota. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just and nobody was, knew what the fuck it was. I was like, all right, that's tight, and and so um, that really didn't. It's like whatever, you know. We'll, we're gonna finish it, and it'll. Yeah, what I tell you, I was like, doesn't doesn't matter. We're like you have to make something that we're proud of and we're happy of, exactly. and then if it's cool, it's cool. If people like it, that's great. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the the thing is, so I don't know. I, that was the first time I saw that cut because this has changed a lot since I was just in your guys's office yeah. watching. Yeah. And I was like, 
wondering because we f we shot a lot of stuff we had a lot of angles on which to have the like which trajectory we wanted to take our footage and our and our audio that we picked up and we ended up doing that oh thanks <laughs> Just, handsome uh, kevin by the way <laughs> it's a matter of knowing like what we were ultimately going for and i don't mean to like stop you there and let's okay. roll it back even further but it's really like why did we even start this project in the first place you know we sat in our conference room and we knew we wanted to do this Local sounded like a cool name, and it was just a tap market that's out there to be yeah. able to jump around in each of these scenes. Not even just Smash. Smash, no. FGC, maybe the DDR kids down the street, yeah. Scandia yeah. have a local <laughs> hop in, you know? We want to go there and check it out, hear about the lore, hear about the people who keep coming back, and why this is the lifeblood well, of, there's, of these scenes. There's stories there, right? There's untapped stories. There's interesting people, um, and it's just you, gotta, you just got to find them. You just got to go dig around and see what the scene is really about and i mean we found a lot of very very interesting characters and napkins napkins, napkins all the way stole the show. napkins god he's, napkins he's, we god. came back with napkins footage roof. and we were like you guys gotta see this, this guy is <laughs> sick he's, he's so a fucking funny. legend yeah and he's like oh man um but yeah the the idea was conceived in a way that's like i the I think what is the most attractive part of Melee is obviously the game is sick and fun and, and great to play, but like it's also you end up going and seeing the same people every week and just forming these connections. Everyone's talked about this over and over, but like there was a specific idea. It's like you're in a car driving home from a tournament, yeah, and you're a bunch of shitters, maybe not, but like those stories, that shit that you're talking about in the car on the way home, that's like that's like the beating heart, right? And that was like. We should try to find that and make something, and that that was kind of the goal. And with such a broad goal, it's hard because we're just like, we'll film everything. Yeah. And then it, it comes down to you guys, and like, what do we put in? And then it, <laughs> yeah. it gets really dicey. And um, we know that the people who experience these kind of locals are going to be able to kind of just understand and get it. But more importantly, it's also to open a window or open a portal to show people out there who are used to seeing Dota 2, League of Legends. Like, you don't have to be in that car you're not in that car with your bros after the tournament these are people who play at home on their computer and they don't you know get to experience that right. kind of brotherly uh camaraderie whatever yeah. it may be at a local to this is how these players have to grind to be better you know and honestly my hope is that all those players if you play dota if you play whatever there is a local in your yeah. area oh. there are people playing on land somewhere near you i really hope that with this, at least some people might be like, well, I wonder what's around me. Maybe go check something out. Yeah. Um, it's so sick. As someone who just grew up playing online games their entire life and then like started playing Melee, I was like, I, I have friends to this day that I met through Melee that are like real A1 hitters. <laughs> and Top dogs. It's, it's just like, it's, that's really cool. It's like, it's like a shortcut to, I don't know, meaningful connections, I guess. It, it can be, I guess. That's not a way to look at it, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So I want to kind of jump into the trip. So the reason everybody's here is that everybody here was part of our little trip. We had a road trip down to Arizona oh, from here in L.A. Mm -hmm. We rented mm -hmm. a van. Uh, and we actually have a little behind-the-scenes piece we put together, like very, very last mm -hmm. minute. Oh, yeah. I was like literally in the car. <laughs> we had just picked up the rental car, and I was like, I got an idea, Okay. I just want to film it. a behind the scenes thing. We'll just use your cell phones, whatever. I had so many memes Let's on my just phone do it. too. I was like, Dan, I don't know. Yeah, because <laughs> you had to make space, right? I was like, these memes, I haven't d offloaded them onto the mainframe. Like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was plenty of problems with deciding to very last minute shoot an entire behind the scenes video on all our cell phones. But we ended up putting something together and uh, a friend of BTS edited it together. Uh, do you guys have it good to go? Okay, so. Uh, this is just like a little piece. It's just like a little, little droplet, a little mm. story of us going down to Arizona and filming uh, locals Arizona. So whenever, don't judge you're us ready, too hard. Take it away. No, oh, it's their job to judge. Okay, so Dakota, we decided that we're gonna film an entire behind-the-scenes piece using just footage from our cameras, from our cell phones. Okay. But basically, everybody should be shooting random shit. Even thinking about. All right, I, you look like oh, my phone. My phone to film <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't have to. Just know that <laughs> so I'll probably be poking my phone, my, my phone, phone in your face from time right. to time. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's go. All right. What is this I don't fucking? Think so that's my what bag. Is got my phone. This got is my such a nice bag. Purple carrot. This is like llbean.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.
So a couple it's of such things. a nice bag, Number Dakota. One, it is, it is. We don't one. have axe. Wait, actually, you should just explain. What I learned from this was Wait a minute, like, I just saw his tweet. He's like, blessed huh? be my life. People are just know, so happy I'm going to a local. Coming? It's amazing. I'm okay, going to start live. Yeah, I wish. So, <laughs> you want him off? He left me on unseen. <laughs> he left you on unseen? <laughs> no. If they don't, what are we going to do? Because then we just like are missing half of our entire story. So, that's what we have to figure out in the car. Let's go. Hi. Hi. Fun time. Hello. On the road again! Right, Ken? Yeah, it looks like a goddamn trucker. So Mad TV comes out and then it feels like those characters represented that magazine so well. I can I can get it. I can get it. Okay. Uh so Mikey says, it sounds like Tim and Jeff are down for tomorrow morning, but would rather not do it at their place. Also, they might not go to SAK tomorrow, the tournament. Okay. LOL. Yes. So, I said, that's fine, we can go somewhere else. Do we want to do an interview in the Motel 6? I mean, we can make the Motel 6 look like We can shine that shit up. You just fucking... <laughs> Oh, we did it again. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, it's too hard. First off, all motels are sketchy. So yeah, I know. But you guys you are all get a nice looking. Yeah, I do. All right, I Listen, am not against the problem, any of this. You know, with I'm ready to all right, we just nice rolled up. This is the nice first well. Motel Six. And uh, the, first the first Motel 6 they probably put in Arizona. It looks like dog shit. Oh, I'm gonna get some Arby's and Curly Fries up, right next to the, the swimming gets pool. Fucking stolen in the middle of the night. Oh no! Oh, oh that's oh, what I did. I took it out. Leave it in there. Yeah. All right, give me oh, away. Just, just leave it in. Dan, is this your first time ever purchasing something? Yeah, for the most part. You can literally look at their windows and it's like all this shit. Yeah, so this is the SAK Gaming Lounge. This is where we hold our weeklies. Um, it used to be over there where you see the Aid to Women Center. That is the like the Christian alternative to the Planned Parenthood, which is next door to it. Um, so they bought out the old space of the lounge and then moved us into here and paid for like new flooring and shit. Um, so they could be next to the Planned Parenthood. We have the K massage over there, which is literally a hand job massage place. Wait, is it actually? It's it, yeah, actually a hand job massage place. <laughs> so we got a <laughs> unanticipated. Mikey, I thought I turned the dog in. <laughs> Mikey. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, wait. I think the alarm actually like triggers the police to just come down. <laughs> oh, so we have to talk to cops? Maybe. So Steve... I can't stay in there. We have to talk to cops, bros. We do? Um. The light, are you... <laughs> You gotta find your light. light. You, you gotta find your light. light. So it's like a theater acting thing. Yeah. Though, right? Yeah. This is your light. You're like, ah. <laughs> so it's gotta, it's gotta, it's gotta <laughs> blow in your face. There you go. Right there. There you find your light. Mike's girlfriend that he lives with and loves very, very much, uh, does not want us to shoot in the house this late. Uh, this is a new development, and so now we are going to the poop house, which is where we were going to film tomorrow night, which we still are and we're going to interview Mike there and set up. So now we're loading the gear back in the car and um, hopefully we'll run into yet, yet another snag. <laughs> Sorry beyond the summit. <laughs> Yeah.
How, it's like one, one in the morning. One twelve. No, it's twelve. Oh, oh, that's time that's it, difference. That's, yeah, we lost. So go time. We lost an hour. Okay, how'd it go? I think it went well. Um, it was my first time ever interviewing a, a man in, in a room. <laughs> Um, surrounded by other men. Surrounded by other men, sweaty, it was a little hot. I feel like it did what I wanted to, which is was like serious in some moments when it needed to be, which is important for this, to be rounded and not just be hyper meme poop hole fucking shit, you know? <laughs> but, and then the, the, really the heart of it is that it is just a bunch of silly fucking boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was fun, now I want to fucking go to bed, so let's go Sweet. back to our Motel oh, 6. Oh boy. Alright. my bed onto Dakota's bed. Um, having to interview in a motel room is not like the easiest thing in the world to do, but Dakota had the good idea of putting him in this corner, which is not bad, because now, let's sit right here, it won't really look like a hotel room completely, oh, and cool. it'll kind of look cool. You know. <sighs> Two tone. Two tone. 70s. Anthony decided to join us today after sleeping and missing call time. <laughs> I didn't miss it, I was awake. <laughs> Blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who <laughs> seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong. Okay, freaks. Oh. Okay, I got three boys, three boys in blue. How do we feel? I'm tired. I'm tired. My feet hurt. We're tired. How did today go? You feel like in what we were trying to accomplish? Like Andrew, how do you feel like uh, today went? I feel like we have, once we identified exactly the ones that we were gonna follow, the the key players made everything a lot easier. I'm very excited for the edit. I think we're gonna find a lot of cool things. How do you feel? I mean, they didn't smell. Oh, come on. Me and the boys, dog. Me and the boys. I, I can't do those. What? Uh, I don't know if we're getting anything. I'm inventing a new dad. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, bye. <laughs> Can you believe a bunch of unfit looking dorks uh, came out with that piece of footage? Oh god. Okay. Interesting choice Two. on the upside down footage, Jan. Can you tell us more about right. it? What was the stylistic? So, yeah, first off, I appreciate that you called it a choice because yeah. that is a decision that I made. Mm -hmm. uh, Intentional. And it's really about uh, subversing your ideas of what an upside down behind the scenes video Good can vocabulary. be. vocabulary. Because you probably haven't actually thought about it before. And so when you get approached so directly and surprisingly, mm -hmm. it really opens your mind to what this project could be. When you look at the Earth uh, upside down, it, a picture of it, it, we actually, we just decided what was the right side up. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So Unless God's that. out there, like looking, and he's yeah. got the right side up. But That's right. All right. Know. So actually, we, upside down footage. It, 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 it was a fucking accident. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's anyway. my fault. That's my fault. <laughs> um, okay. So first notes of watching that is a. These kind of projects is literally why I came to be on the summit. It's exactly what I wanted to be doing. It's mm -hmm. traveling around with my friends and making videos about shit I care about. And so that is why watching that makes me feel good inside. 
Yeah. Um, but the other funny part is remembering how terrified we were the morning of not knowing if Axe was going to be able to make it. That yeah. was rough. <laughs> yeah, the whole car ride, I was uh, talking, interfacing with like Mikey and Axe, and this is all done on Facebook Messenger, and I'm like, and Vector Man, he doesn't message anyone, and so I was like, they, they like, we wanted to do it at their place, and they're like, we don't want to do it at our place. Okay, it's like, okay, well, how about we do it at SAK, and that didn't work, and nope. like, it was just this insane, like, what do we do, boys? Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was B. very scary. What's plan B going to be? Yeah. Because the initial, really all we had initially was that there's two stories here. Okay? There's the history of AZ, uh, local scene, the people, the lore, the characters. Mm -hmm. And then there is the night of the locals. The actual tournament. And if we didn't have Axe and Vector Man, what the fuck did we have? Yeah, because right. a, a big chunk is that the talking head bit, you know, this, uh, you know, interviews you know, that's a meat of what we craft the story around like we can find things that happen throughout the night but that in itself is not enough it's not a self-contained story arc you know it's not interesting to watch alone it's not a documentary right yep so thank god we found they came it was even yeah, on, they even on the day they we came. were like well and we shot in the motel six well now they're if they're coming now they're gonna be half an hour late so we're still good mm. but if they just left ooh, it, that so was the it, we're we still did, dealing with it we did the interviews and then we went to the local that day it was yeah. a very long day yeah. and then that night we did more shooting at the poop house because we just wanted footage of of like friends and that was even longer night it was mm -hmm. like both nights were long because the first night we went, we got, we drove there. So it's like yeah. five hours mm -hmm. after work. We get there and we go to dinner with Mikey. And then we're going to film at his house. We can't. So then we have to travel all the way to Poop House, other side of town. Mm -hmm. Then film there, get back to the motel, wake up early. It's that, that's the thing about all these um, short film days. We really had a day and a half to do all of this. And we did most of it in a day. Yeah. But... You're packing so much gear in and out of cars so many times, and you're having to go, 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 and time is the only resource that matters. It really drains you really quick. It's insane, yeah. I didn't... Also, it, the the amount of times we just loaded and unloaded things, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I it never yeah. factored in to anything I thought about until I was like carrying tripods. And yeah, because like, all the equipment, you know, I can't name half of it the zero one zero tripod or whatever. It's like, it's got like 70,000 moving close. parts. And he's like, Oh wait, you didn't even do it right. <laughs> you got to fold it this way guys. And it's a lot, you know, and, uh, because these are heavy investments and, you know, we don't want to damage it. Obviously if we want to do more of it and it's intense, I want to talk about difficulties here. It's just like, it, there's a lot, even as someone who like thinks they know, like, how things are filmed and whatever as like a novice and i was like oh shit like the amount of like just like physical work um there's quite a bit and i thought that was cool to learn and know now and the mental problem solving is like a constant gymnastics of we have a problem we have a problem we have a problem we well problem. and those problems you know they cascade downward well okay now that we can't do this interview or we can't shoot here you know how is that going to affect what we shoot later tonight is the aesthetic going to be completely opposite how do we adjust for those kind of things so yeah it's a mental exercise as well as a physical one but yeah and preparations going into it i mean i assume like if, if you're like on charge of this one you may have an idea of what the sak gaming lounge looks like and for everyone else though i certainly had no idea what i was getting into i, know I had these no are, fucking clue you know i know these are local scenes so they're yeah. going to be a bit <clears throat> Poverty rummaged something like yeah, something about them is probably not going to be pristine. We're not going to be going into. There a was casino. just like a corner in the in the sack that just was just like piled with shit, just like piled debris. Yeah, it was just, yeah, <laughs> it was like the debris field. So <laughs> like, how do we make this not look like they just play, you know, in a trash heap? How do we know if there's going to be room for us to be able to exist? You know, we have plans probably to check out a lot of other locals, and I feel like this is probably going to want to be be one of the bigger spaces that we're going to have to work in. For sure. Uh, so yeah. moving forward, I imagine we're going to be really like pressed for retail space for trying to squeeze what we can without being in even our own gear shots, space. You know? Even yeah, gear space. It's, it's yeah. going to be rough. Like we had, they were nice enough to like give us a nice little corner with tables, tables yeah. like tables and outlets, yep. it, which is all you need, right? Yeah. I, I, but I guarantee great. that's going to be a rarity moving forward. For sure. Uh, don't say that, please. But, you know, <laughs> well, we got to go into it expecting 
no, I don't want to expect the worst, but definitely don't want to expect like this is going to be a breeze. There's going to be room for us. <laughs> no. We don't need these extra, you know, extension cords. But and also surge protectors. this first local was a very good exercise for us just as a production team, like as a group of four guys going to, to film something like this and as like a BTS production crew who hasn't necessarily done this kind of thing to this extent so obviously yeah, from we're, front to end from front to end yeah, yeah. and obviously all of us from individual and butt. as a group we're, <laughs> we're going to be taking a lot away from this uh a lot of notes a lot of things that are going to be taken into the next one and it's going to be a smoother process even though each one's going to be a different beast but i think yep. obviously yeah. we're going to improve every time and it's going to be more and more polished and this is going to be something that we just get better at and is more of a common thing that you're going to see from bts hopefully um so what I wanted to ask is there's so much shit that we had to cut. Yeah. Okay. There's mm. so much stuff we had to cut and it's hard to even um Can you even begin. like per percentage it like right now? Like if we if we have a hundred percent well we 100 cut percent of our material here, like how much do you four and a half hours? I mean it was like four and a half hours. Eh, actually probably more. It's probably like five and a half hours of footage. How much two cameras. I mean but like just straight up footage. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm trying to like go through all the timelines. It's five probably, and a half. You're saying like <clears throat> five and a half hours down to, to 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Right. If you're just looking at raw footage, so mm. it's probably. Do you think we had too much? Do you think we had too little? Do you think it was just enough? I think that we had um, a good amount of footage because you always need a lot. I think we needed more B-roll, and I think we needed more focused kind of idea about our yes. interviews. But <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. You don't really know what the hell you're doing on a project like this. It was, and again, like the, the thesis was just very vague. Very. And all we knew was that Arizona was cool and funny, um, at least relatively, and let's just go and find out, um, or find out more, apparently. Because yeah. I, I, I know a lot of these guys, and I'm like, I, I, I'm like, there are stories here that are worth kind of telling. Yeah. And so that was a a nice springboard to be able to like, okay, well, we're not going in completely blind, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but more focus is definitely as, as like on my end, like creative producer, I was also drafting the questions to interview these guys and I was like, it, a lot of the questions I asked just didn't matter. Uh, to well, it, Eventually in the in big cut, you know And I, mean? I think something that we didn't do that I think would have not that they helped a matter, lot. But, you know. Well, it's not that they don't matter, it's that they just don't apply. As soon as we understand what the story's about, that becomes something that just is in, it's like the first to be cut right but uh pre-interview interviews which a lot of people don't think about but they are really really important when you do not know everything about where you're going mm -hmm. so like call like when we've done i have done other projects um so say the esports e hall of fame videos we did so i don't know these guys but i know like you a general idea of their stories mm -hmm. so i hit them up on skype and i'm just like hey i'm doing this thing with you let's find some time and then i would call them and we would talk for like two hours and I would record the entire conversation <clears throat> and basically have an interview before we had an interview. And by doing that, number one, I learned a lot of new stuff that I can research even more. And then number two, I can focus what were good answers, what were answers I thought I would get that were bad and like, where is the story going to go? So then I edit that down basically into like a pre edit a pre-story edit mm -hmm. and then rewrite all my questions so then when i actually go to the interview a we've both kind of rehearsed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. b i can have a way more focused approach to like interviewing him and doing that which then impacts the edit because then my editors know this is what we're going for much more obviously much more direct questioning you're not you're not f fishing or, or looking digging through a timeline to find oh well this happened to work out you're, you're directing your questions to you're not, you know, influencing them, but you're trying to achieve, you know, a, a goal, a story that you, you know, you've pre-recorded, pre-written. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird sort of ball that you juggle. It's like you're trying to guide them towards something, but also trying to be natural. And it's it's this insane like dance that you have to learn, I guess, yeah. if you're going to be. I mean, you've never done anything like this. Well, yeah. yeah. Like, JMR Luna talked about it quite a bit on yeah. one of our older movie buff podcast i recommend you go check it out we did big lebowski on that episode and he goes off at the first part of that podcast talking about essentially that's a lot of his job you know when he sits down with these teams and gives those interviews he's trying to get them to give him the answers he wants you know for his story he's trying to tell 
and that is a is a snake charming art in itself i imagine especially mm-hmm. when you're working with gamers maybe with smashers and fgc kind of gamers it'd be they're definitely more theatric and it'd be a bit more outgoing but you know when you're trying to break through maybe some of the more shelled kind of players who have that tougher exterior to crack it can be a challenge like and it's you know a skill in its own i'm sure something that you you i everyone is like Ugh. i hope that's easier the next time yeah but then you get guys like napkins <clears throat> who yeah. is literally like magic sparkle dust just being exploded on you when you're talking to him yeah it's like you're yeah i couldn't stop smiling you know every all his answers are great his delivery is super concise and good like it's also like very personality driven like all the things you really hope for that like are intangible like short answers to get to the point exactly very good personality forward um answers and like somebody who is entertaining yeah um and also just like i don't know i forgot what i was gonna say about napkins but he (laughs) he he was just so great like it it was the natural part of it um that's huge and also he's i won't say he's like sick because it used to be like kind of an l because every peach is like oh the down smash napkins actually just got an honorable mention on the come up on the new azpr so wow so congrats he he didn't make it to top 10 but you know what i mean like it's cool because like the pr just came out a couple days ago actually and then it's basically you can see the results of their grinding of this yeah going into that yeah how's my boy floats i didn't i didn't see i think he's on the come up actually as well don't don't crucify me but i have to recheck whatever all the guys were really really awesome i think it was one of those things also that people were very scared of us because they thought we were pranking them (laughs) they thought we were memeing on them here's the thing i so i think that being because i did the slime on the scene videos every like smasher thinks that anytime i try to contact them out of the blue or or just for anything that they don't know me they're like is is this like a Am I getting like? Bit. Am I getting pranked, bro? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I have to be like, no, please trust me. I'm. This is for reals. I'm a real yeah. person for too. Reals, bro. <laughs> and it's just this weird like precedent that we have to. It's just another little like step to be like reassure them that yeah, it's okay. And mm-hmm. You're not getting memed on and stuff like that. So yeah, they really. But once they honestly like, especially Vector Man. Vector Man, like you could see, he was a little bit like guarded. Yes. And then as soon as he wa- like we talked to him for a little bit while we were setting up, he still wasn't totally opening it up. But then as we're going through Axe interview, he's like, "Oh, I get this now." Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And they aren't gonna fucking do some stupid shit. And then he was like, "All aboard!" And he's like calling people, "Yo, come, come look. We got to talk to these guys." He's like at the thing. He he's like grabbing footage. me. He's like, "Yo, yeah. talk to this guy. Talk to this guy." And then yeah, send us footage. Like I mean. Uh, wh- Everybody was super welcoming and awesome, but it was an interesting thing to go from people thinking we're pranking them to understanding yeah. what we're trying to do. That's also just hand in hand with this is a new, different type of project for us, and this one in particular is the pilot. There's nothing to be like, hey, check out what we've already done, right. or this right. is what we're doing. Yeah. No, maybe moving forward now, it's great to have this to be like, this is what we've done, this is what we're hoping to do, we want to get you out there, we want people to see the griminess of what you're doing and all that, but <laughs> uh, it's good to get this one behind us for sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so what what I thought was really funny it was like the days leading up to this in post production and the editing and we saw cuts. These guys were in the chokey, like I said, and I was just like, I was like the the nurse, and they're like <laughs> sick, right? And they're just like, ah, I need like water, and I'm like, I come and I got water, but instead of water, it's like Twitch clips. You yeah. Know? I'm like, Anything you guys need, I'm here, like, because I can't, I just can't get in the program and start doing that, right? And so I was just like the the like by the bedside <laughs> while you guys were fighting the virus of like crunch yeah you're editing. a medic dude you're a medic and um i i i'm just it i'm so happy with the cut because that's the first time i saw it yeah it i wanted airing, to hear the reaction I, I ran into dan's office and i was like it's so good. i, love it so good. I, like I was it dude i was worried i, I was think worried it turned out so great and i'm that's that's a good feeling yeah it is really you like hot. it you haven't seen like shit what you haven't seen shit until <laughs> this right no yeah i know i saw the rough cut Oh, Not a rough cut, but I saw the trailer and stuff like that. I liked it a lot. I, I thought mean, we hit a lot of the marks that we were going for. I yeah. mean, I'm a dork. I watched it. And I'm like, oh, it's like an MTV documentary, but for gamers. I think we did it. You know, and nice. Like, that seems silly, but Which they it's like did, that's what I wanted. That's like what when we were in the conference room. Like, I want to do locals, you know, and I don't want to just be Smash or whatever. But I want to go around and like learn all the stories. I mean, I. You know, I just somehow keep learning more and more about Smash just by diving through all these projects, and I feel like 
I know enough that's like, we must be doing it right. I feel like we must be doing something right because people are getting educated. Yeah. And it's funny that you feel that way. I think that's just a CP thing is that, you know, you have a hard image of what you want to do and then you put that and dump what you feel like is way too much onto the shoulders of these guys over here. You know, whether it's this event or whether we're doing a summit and we're like, we got all these funny ideas, guys, right? And you throw it at them and they're, they're just grinding away and you're like, please, I hope it's good. And, or even Peter for like it, graphics and intros, he's like, I have nothing to work with. What do you want from yeah. me? And I'm like, <laughs> here, man, these are funny quotes. These are pictures. This is what they, this is what the kids like. Yeah. And then they give it back to you and you're like, we did it. Yeah. I don't know. It's, 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 it's hard. a baby now. Cause it's like you, when you're like, for all intents and purposes, like the idea, man, like it starts here. Everyone, everyone has so much input and it's, it all, it, the pie chart becomes pretty even, but like, it starts out like, all right, it's like this. And then it's so hard for them, you just to make that call and then they have to work for like five hours. And then what if it's like wrong? <laughs> mm -hmm. And that sucks, so. What do you think about that on the other end of that, Andrew? How like often that happens and how do you like deal with like, kind of sometimes we just do get things tossed at us and you just have to fucking deal with it. But this, I mean, this project was super collaborative. It wasn't until the yeah. end where we were like, blinders on, don't fucking look at us. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're gonna yeah. make the decisions and you don't get to talk about yeah. it, you know? <laughs> I felt like the beginning of this project was the best example of, all right, let's all figure this out. Let's like, what do, what do you what do you get a feeling for? What do I have a feeling for here? And what is possible? What, it, what it, What's in the clay? You know, we haven't formed anything yet, but like, okay, where can we possibly, okay, let's grab the chunk of this and let's just plop that here and we'll, we'll think about that as its own little sculpture. Um, but this project was, I, I didn't feel a sense of really at all. It's like, here, you got to put this in there. This is in a sense that I didn't want to do it. There wasn't anything I felt no, attached yeah. that to does or, or like really against. Uh, yeah. in yeah. terms of the edit. There like was, nothing that was, you felt you had to had to keep in, but somebody yeah. wanted to pull out or somebody was forcing in that you didn't want to have. It was have a very that. fluid project in that sense. So I, I think everyone everyone contributed perfectly. Uh, it was great. There wasn't any, you know, headbutting. I think we're all on the same page, I think. Is yeah, we all had, we did have the like big picture goal of what we wanted to come out with. Yeah. What did you think this morning? So like this weekend, so Andrew, I didn't like do shit last week and Andrew pumped through the entire basically tournament side of the edit. How, how we broke up the edit, it was, I took like the history portion and I did like talking head stuff. Andrew did the tournament portion and the tournament is, is a lot more intense. There is like an hour and a half straight of fucking stand up interviews with these guys. There's another hour and a half of just like B-roll footage to come through. He's got to collect all these Twitch clips from Anthony. He's got to get all these references. The and brackets like, and all the that The brackets stuff. and like yeah. tell a story from this night you know yeah. um and, and you did that so then you just like you give it to me and i'm just like all right bye leave me alone because i'm a psycho and i can't edit with anybody around me yeah. so i just like only work from like 3 a.m to 5 a.m <laughs> by me, myself just like hey you up <laughs> <laughs> like at five in the morning i was, I was not up yeah. <laughs> uh yeah yeah coffee and cigarettes and darkness is the only way i can work nowadays but then you know, you don't hear from me. You were like, how's it? Every morning you would check in. How's it going? What are you doing? Are you yeah. I was like, okay, good, fine. No, you know, yeah. like, and then it's like due day. It's like Monday. It's yeah. coming out in the afternoon. You wake up this morning. You you knew that I came home at like 6.30 a.m. last night. Maybe yeah, 6.30. I actually didn't hear you this morning. Um, last well, I texted you to make sure you woke me up. Yeah, which a <laughs> little yeah. mix up on the last release. But that, we don't about worry that. about that. Yeah. Uh, what do you think when you came in? Were you worried? And then what do you think when you saw it? Uh, no, I I wasn't worried at all. I knew at this point uh, at the edit, you weren't going to come home unless you were like ready to be done cutting it, like picture lock in a sense. Uh, I knew the audio was going to be all over the place. That's just kind of what, that's not important while you're trying to craft the story. Like, yeah, you can bring levels up, you can normalize, you can fuck with that. But if the story's not there, what well, don't bother with the audio. So I knew that was gonna be like the main goal of today. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily with this footage, there's nothing that's crazy. It's like, oh God, this is gonna, this is gonna take me 20 minutes to do this one clip. It's really just, okay, I gotta, I gotta bring these up. I gotta bring this down. I gotta make sure the music doesn't step on anything, you know, too important. So it was, it was actually pretty low key. 
uh, it did because it's such a long timeline and there's so many individual clips and there's so many people talking, there's so many, you know, like musical cues and sounds and extra things like that have to get mixed down so you don't really notice them and everything gets a little cross fade so you don't get any blips or boops or anything like that. Mm -hmm. There's very unappealing. So you came in thinking that it's better than you expected so far and you should be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I thought, deadline, no I thought it should be uh, pretty manageable. I mean, the, right. 15 minutes is a long time to comb through all the audio and make sure it's clean. So that's, you know, we definitely cut it close at very, the end. Very close. Uh, didn't get a chance to do color, but that is that in itself takes a lot of time. It's uh, funny because in this scenario, we can get away with it. Yeah. It is definitely a sin, and yeah. I feel as though I have sinned. <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, for not doing color correction yeah okay. like there is actually i mean there's some minor stuff in there on certain clips and whatever but when you're dealing with something that's doc you can slide with it being raw because yeah. raw looks raw yeah. yeah right and it looks like it's just footage of what's happened and not a super cinematic stylistic kind of approach yeah but for me if I were to do this again, the biggest thing that I'm mad about, not that I'm mad about anything, yeah, but I want to go into like that. Like, yeah. we do this again. We do what this do again. You do different. So the huge, the, the biggest number one thing is that there is no steez at all in this. There's no style. It is all story and character, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But I would really like to have um, a intro sequence that intros all the characters in it that's super stylized. So like for this, we had planned out one. It was gonna be. Back in the back set, we're gonna bring out CRTs. We're gonna cut together little character things on each for each person. Mm. Spray the water, like the whole floor, dramatic lighting, and film these CRTs with the characters on them and have their names floating next yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. Right? So like super cool, dramatized. And then for all the other thing was all of the footage that was gonna be. I'm giving away secrets right now. Okay, yeah. this is free shit. Free <laughs> shit. All right. So all the we're footage that was gonna this. be from the past. Or from uh, the um, actual tournament footage itself, I wanted to project on a wall and then film the wall um, because I want or do mm. double up right. So you do what's called um, some shit I can't remember, and you put it on the CRT, then you record the CRT, and then you play that back again and record the recording through the oh, projector. Okay, so okay. you basically like degrade all the yeah. footage like three times. You degrade it analog. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. wild. Um, it's what I used to do. And what I used to do technique for old, pro this old project with the guy I worked with who really liked having this analog feel is we'd re-record, 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 yeah. and then re-record the entire project and then like edit in. And you can do these little like little cool edits where it just adds a little bit more to something that's very plain because this footage is very plain. Mm -hmm. There, we don't have we don't have a lot of crazy equipment. There's like one slider shot in it, and there's no gimbals. You know, there's nothing like out of control. That would do a lot to this mm -hmm. piece to yeah. really like knock it up at yeah. level. And You're so for, for me, all the throwback stuff, right? You would do. Yeah, well, for, I, I will. I want an intro sequence. Yeah, I yeah. want like more stylized footage cut in between that we can deal with, like yeah. that we can shoot on site, not. At site, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but for me, that's my biggest improvement to the product would be yeah. style and style. It up. Yeah, I agree. The logo is cool though. Peter did a great job with the logo. That's the most style that it has. Yeah, the logo is great. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, it's uh, a missed opportunity, and I think again, it comes down to probably just the time and where we were kind of focusing our energy was. We didn't capitalize on music to the best of our abilities. It's it's in there, and some some Didn't of them. Edit? Yeah, yeah it in sucks. the edit. The music is not good. I, it, There's definitely a tone that matches with what's being talked about, which is good. But, yeah, I mean, I, I mean it's then, not like, you know. To an extent. Like, that was know, a banger, you know. Yeah. If, bring me that track. <laughs> if we, if ideally, having some more time to really, really, really craft uh, or find specific perfect songs to match the these sections. Because there's some of this is like very chopped up and is making it work with, you know, what, what we had found that already worked mm -hmm. and then it was like okay we got you know an hour left let's make a decision here um so on the next project maybe maybe we find some some tracks beforehand we kind of you know, have a theme yeah. yeah uh that i can play in my earphones while i'm shooting you know on yeah. the day that kind of thing tends to tends to help yeah. um 
But yeah, I think everything else I I really liked. Slime, what would you do different? Do the next Smash local, whatever it may be. <laughs> um, I would. Well, knowing everything I know now, it's like I you, I would just I have I would have more focused questions. I actually didn't get to do um, pre interviews with Axe and Vector Man, um, but even then I I don't know I even then my questions were a little I I was too afraid to cut them off. Not to say like I should be cutting people off, but like sometimes like they they just start going into like a whole thing, and you're just like. Uh, cause you're trying to put it together in your head and I would just reform my questions after they're done speaking and focus more. Yeah. That, that was just the biggest they part They may go me. off on like a tangent of something that could be okay, but it's like, well, if they talk about it once, they may not talk about it again with the same yeah, I was, liveliness I would, that they did the first time. I feel so like it, I was less fluid tough. when I was interviewing them. Mm-hmm. I, I had like a sort of like schedule in my head to go by and I didn't want to really move away from that. You did not. And you were you were so much so that I it was like actually kind of shocking where where you were, as soon as they answered, you hit with your next question, which I knew was your next question, and it wasn't something you had just come up with then. Like you yeah. very you never investigated more or, mm-hmm. like, kind of like was like oh that's interesting let's talk about that for a little bit or like did it it was always they finish and you go boom into the next one. Yeah, I it was just very it wasn't it was inorganic and that's not how I like do that's not how i like communicate with humans right so i should try to apply that to even if we're trying to focus on an interview just be more finding that middle ground like it's good to go in with a heads up on like this is the stuff again this might help even more if you do dan's theory which is the best theory is having the pre-interview before the interview finding out it's like well what would you think we like you know if you call back some like you know we're going to talk about arizona so if there's some things about arizona you know we need to hit what are they and he goes into them a bit then you take that, you research it, and then you know, oh, I really want to know why they changed it to scrub my dish or whatever. Then you can really <laughs> drill those kind of questions. And then be open enough to know that if he drops a seed of something, you know the chat, viewers, whoever's going to be asking about it, you just ask it right then and there. Like if you have your own genuine bit of curiosity, it's probably best you just do that and explore it in that moment. Mm-hmm. And then you get back on the path again and ask him about something. Yeah. yeah really it's, back it's, like a, it's like a Jeep, and it can go off the road, mm-hmm. and you just come back on the road. Yeah. But I was driving a, a Civic, a two-wheel drive, <laughs> and I was scared. I'm a Starbucks mom with just, like, a nice SUV. Yeah, you just got that monster truck. <laughs> yeah, but I don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even go to the grocery store. I got somebody else doing that for me. What about you, handsome? Me? What are you going to do? So, again, this gonna is not always going to be... Well, okay, this is not always going to be about Smash, and we've talked about yeah. some locals and some of your old stomping grounds that we want to go back to. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, at what I was saying, and I said this to, I think, some of the people there in Arizona to get an idea of what we're doing, it's like, if, if I had this opportunity to do this 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would want to do this for all the arcade scenes out there, you know? New York, where, Chinatown. That was where big Street Fighter players, Marvel players, you had to go there to practice. You know, there was no online play back then or any, no matchmaking of that nature. You had to go your local and find out who was the best there and beat them down the arcade. And then you were kind of cool with everybody mm-hmm. and you'd hang out with them all the time or whatever. And yeah. those stories still exist. The arcades don't though, not as many, you know, China, even like prize Chinatown fair is gone, but how awesome would it have been if we could have done one of these on Chinatown fair oh, or all these God. amazing arcade spots. We may be able to still catch some. And if you know some out there, please let us know. But it transcends obviously past smash and arcades and there's street fighter and there's all these other fighting games that have their scenes and their locals. And I want to go check all of them out. Yeah, you know, for sure. With, I, you know, so in the future, I guess it's, I want us to continue to go outside of our comfort zone. Smash in Arizona is close and smash is something that, you know, we know a lot about and they know us now let's go in more into the unknown. hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree. I, I like, this is an opportunity to do new things with new people and new places and new games. And I hope that we can capitalize that. And I hope people let us know about cool shit, you know? We we're, we do our research and we talk to everybody we can, but if you know somebody or you uh, are part of a local that you think is really cool and fun and different uh, in any way and the people are somebody we might want to meet, you should definitely hit us up, yeah. come to our Discord, yeah. email us. Yeah, like, oh, this guy's a pro now, but what you wouldn't know is he came to our monthly local here in Michigan and he yeah. was the shitter, you know? It's like, I, we want to hear about that. Yeah, yeah, apparently the guy, uh, Vot Zero, that was in the the, the dock, it, yeah. it was, I didn't know who that guy was. I thought I was pretty up on AZ lore. Apparently he was like, 
uh, you know, a, a name. And then I saw in the chat, Crimson Blur was like, oh, let's go, Vod Zero. Oh, and I was nice. like, all right, so he knows. You right? don't know, now you know, dog. Yeah, and that's so cool. Like, like, I was yeah. a G. That's, and that's a Vector Man hookup. He's like, mm-hmm. talk to this guy right now. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I just took him in the back and we just talked. And it's, then you find out he invented the up snare or whatever the fuck it may be. <laughs> I'm trying to make up a new smash term, but it, it works that way. It's like, oh, he's the first guy who knew that when you did the Magneto slide, you had to do it with two fucking fingers like this right, or whatever. Right, and you're right, like, wait, yeah. what? That's the guy? This is Ben Merlini Wu. He invented the jungle pool. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, ben there, Wu! there are those people out there and there's people who know those stories, but at the time, they didn't have mm. YouTube and Twitch and they yeah. didn't share it. It was just cast into the darkness and it's exactly. still with them. Yeah. So we want to go and find those nuggets and mine them right back out the craziest thing i learned there that we didn't get to talk about at all in this because it just didn't have a place so i mean suck that dick scrub that dish fuck my tiny ass 69 those are all great after the show very arizona yeah Mm -hmm. after the show (laughs) but (laughs) uh forward and his story of Mm. touring the country Mm. playing smash back in the diggity days yeah before it was like a real ass thing dude so cool and if you look at the interviews what's hilarious is so i was very specific because i knew i had to do about i don't know it was like we did 15 or 18 interviews that night um so i was like i gotta keep it like five minutes i gotta keep it quick me and forward talked for 45 minutes yeah. oh, single on take camera? on camera oh my god I hit record yeah 45 minutes later because i was just outside. tumbling down this lore hole yeah, yeah and yeah. he's telling me all this shit and i'm just like what <laughs> and he knew Wait, a lot you more did than just what too. Dude. I, even, I even was chatting with him for like 20 minutes not on interview just about legend. other fighting games dude like, he's a legend been around was, yeah so it's like wow uh his combo video yeah combos Forward's on cock. colorado kids yeah, yeah, forward. The, that, what's hilarious is I was I went back and looked for a line where Ford's like I'm forward. I do this, blah, blah blah. But the interview starts like with this with Andrew, <laughs> excuse me, Anthony going, um, "How big is Forward's cock?" <laughs> <laughs> I try to get like, all right, and that's just. And, and, and he <laughs> said it's pretty long. Yeah, no, 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 no. Wait. He said it's nine minutes. It's nine. It's nine. <laughs> nine minutes. He said it's pretty long. It's nine minutes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right, that's right. yeah. It was right. hilarious. I'm sure he's been. That's hilarious. I'm sure he's been making that uh, <laughs> that uh, joke for for decades now. So. In on that. Yeah, so, so check cool. out Forward's combo video on Colorado Kids. Mm. Yes. Uh, Forward's cock. Yeah, that's on YouTube. But what a guy, what a character. I ended up emailing with him actually after um, after that because I was like, yo, I just want to talk to you more and I want to learn more about what you did and I want to hear your stories and he sent me a bunch of pictures from the road and, and we didn't actually get to include any of the pictures from this again. More shit that we have that's just like, it mm-hmm. doesn't fit um, because it's him on the road, but... Yeah. God, I, I'd love to tell that story. I have to say, save it for Arizona Local Part 2, the run back. The Dude, the road trip. It's, like, yeah. it's the Carly Rae Jep- Jepsen emotion B-side. It'd be pretty badass. But bad it's just ass. forward. Season 2, we come back and it's the same guys and like see if they've ever you know, ascended even Some higher in the ranks yeah. or lower. <laughs> the napkins lift gets so much longer or whatever it may be. Oh, yeah. Or just napkins paraly- is ranked number now. one. Who knows? He's <laughs> got an axe at every single local. Yeah, right. Hmm, I just took out axe and I, uh, well, you know, it was, it's pretty great. That'd be so <laughs> sick. Um, God, I love napkins. I just realized that I, there was one picture that I could fit in, and I feel like an idiot because I was going to put it in, a four with, with Chew Dat way back in the day. Oh, really? It's oh, so funny. It's really? so funny. Wow. Um, I don't know. I'm super happy we did this. I'm super happy we got to put it out. That yep. this and the behind the scenes went out, even though I fucked up that shit, <laughs> as usual. I can't fucking do anything I normal blame the here. Computer. Australian lovers will will be down with it. I think it's also a little spooky when you do something like this in Smash because the Smash is documentaried out of its mind right now, and yeah. it kind of always mm-hmm. has. Yeah. That's why we were terrified it, of that. Where it is today has to do a lot with the Smash doc, mm-hmm. which is great, mm-hmm. and. It's like you just don't want to do another one. Nobody wants to just be like someone be like, oh, another one of these. And I feel like we did. I wouldn't say we accomplished it, to be fair. I don't think we hard accomplished doing something so different. But I feel it's distinct enough from Smash Doc as a genre to be its own thing. And I'm that's what I'm most happy about. That's awesome. Yeah. That's actually really cool because that's a scary, scary thing uh, for me in my head. Like. Why are we going and doing this thing in Smash when everybody, every week there's a new trailer for a new doc in Smash? And if you don't have all the pros, who cares? Yeah. It's like doing, like, hey, we should do a red, uh, we should do a, a Leffen documentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, 
And yeah, I'm Which, just. Which, yeah, is like if we. If we wanted to do this kind of project and know that we can sell it to big names and get them excited is we would try to center focus around people like Leffen or maybe more around acts and stuff. But I'm happy that we want to do more of what we wanted to do with yeah. this documentary yeah. and focus more on the lore and the the nitty gritty and the not so pretty, you know? I like the idea from the vibe that we were kind of going for, including Axe, was that Axe is, we're only talking to him because he's been around forever and yeah. he's one of the boys. Yeah. And it's not about him being Axe and like eighth in the world and just this this god basically or demigod or whatever. It's about he's here. He walks around around here and that's what's important because so does Douchebag Dylan and so does Ben and so does Napkins. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. That's what I'm I like. I like Closing that. thoughts about our first uh, Locals episode. Anything else you guys would like to add out there now that it's just going to be out in the YouTubes for people to just watch at their leisure? Thanks to the Poop House boys. Shout out to Poop House. Shout out to Poop House. Shout out yeah. to the boys. Everyone uh, there. Everyone was very nice, very accommodating. Yep. I don't think anyone seemed to be a sour apple. Everyone was great. Mm -hmm. Had a good time. Everyone was super open and friendly, and they were there to do their thing, and we they respected that we wanted to do ours. Shout out to Steven Shack, obviously Vector Man and Axe yep. as well. Mm -hmm, they... Mm -hmm. It was a lot of time to be in that. We did, we lost all power. We just oh. lost all power. <laughs> right. I mean, at least we're at the end. <laughs> oh no. Well. At least it was at the end. Yeah, at least it was at the end. We're still live? Yeah. Oh, oh shit. We? Okay, we just lost power in uh, our office, but apparently <laughs> not all the power. We're alive. We're still alive. And our okay, oh. so we're on, we're on, uh, the, the, our, air, right now. our air is running out and we're Woo! in space. Couldn't so, have been better time. Anyway, shout out to everyone who was involved. It was really fun and I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Yep. And uh, we all just like learned a lot and we made something that I think is relevant and interesting and different and, and cool. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. That is cool. I hope we get to do a lot more. I'm yeah. looking forward to jumping right into like the FGC with something like this. I want to go somewhere where they don't, they're not used to seeing cameras just like kind of waltzing through the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope we get the opportunity to do like we did here with that. Anyways, I think we need to wrap things up with what supply yeah. we have left. There's going to be oh more content coming very soon. Tomorrow, I believe we're going to do a show priority for Star Ladder. Mm, yes. And then I think maybe Friday we might do a movie buff. It's a Ooh. special 420 kind of 420, what up? Oh, so we might do well, uh, yes, a new the Super sex Troopers. Number. So the sex number. The sex number. sex number, of course. All right, guys, the thank you so much number. for tuning in. We're going to try to get our power back and running. It's always a pleasure. Enjoy yourselves. Bye. Enjoy your company. Thanks, we'll guys. see you next time. Thank you. Take care.